Hey guys, hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to take on the potassium sparing diuretics. Before we come to this video, I have an important announcement for you that we are also on Patreon. This is a platform at which people can support us in making more videos and in return will provide you with free educational material and flashcards and many more stuff. So guys, I have provided the link in the description box if you feel like helping other people in getting medical education free of cost, you can help us in growing our platform. So the principal side for the potassium sparing diuretics to act is the collecting duct of the nephron. In the collecting duct of the nephron, there are two types of cell called as the principal cell and the alpha intercalated cell. And now let's look at what are the principal cells and what are the alpha intercalated cell and what is the normal physiology that is going on in these cells. As far as the principal cells are considered, the principal cells contain a receptor for the hormone called as the aldosterone and this receptor is called as the aldosterone receptor. Now as the aldosterone, it comes via the blood into the cell it binds with the aldosterone receptor and as it binds with the aldosterone receptor it influences the expression of certain transporter protein the first transporter protein which is upregulated is the sodium potassium atps pump another transporter protein which is upregulated by the aldosterone is the sodium channel and it is called as the epithelial sodium channel now what happens over there is that as a result of this via the sodium potassium ATPase pump the sodium is pumped from inside of the cell to the outside and the potassium is pumped from the outside into the inside. Now the amount and the concentration of sodium within the cell will decrease while the concentration of potassium within the cell will increase. As a result of increased concentration of potassium within the cell, the potassium will start to leak through a channel which is designated for the transport of potassium. Similarly, the sodium will come into the cell via the channel called as the epithelial sodium channel which was upregulated by the aldosterone and then again via the sodium potassium ATPase pump, the sodium will be reabsorbed into the blood. Now what happens over there is that as a result of the loss of sodium or the reabsorption of sodium there is a negative potential which is generated because the positive cation is going inside. This negative potential will attract not only potassium but it will also attract the hydrogen ions from another cell which is called as the alpha intercalated cell so under normal circumstances what would happen over there is that the aldosterone it would cause the reabsorption of sodium and it would cause the excretion of potassium and hydrogen ions so this is all occurring under normal condition now let's look at what happens when we introduce some diuretics into this scenario called as the potassium sparing diuretics the potassium sparing diuretics we have two classes of drugs the first class is called as the androgen receptor blocker and these are the spironolactone and the aplarinone. While the second class of drug is called as sodium channel blockers and these contain the triametrine and the amyloride. Now let's look at what is the mechanism of action of spironolactone. As I already told you that the aldosterone comes and it binds with the aldosterone receptor. So what happens over there is that the spironolactone it will block the aldosterone receptor. As a result of the blockade of the aldosterone receptor, the aldosterone is not able to bind with the aldosterone receptor. Therefore, there will be no expression of this pump and there will be no expression of the sodium ions. As a result of this, the sodium ions will not be reabsorbed into the blood and they will be excreted into the urine along with water and as I already told you that diuresis is nothing but it is the excretion of sodium and water into the urine. So these drugs will cause diuresis. But what is the catch? The catch is that unlike the other diuretics in which there was a loss of potassium, in these drugs there is no loss of potassium because the potassium only moved when negative potential was created in the urinary lumen and the negative potential was created because of the absorption of the sodium 
and since the sodium is not being reabsorbed therefore the potassium will not be secreted also since there is no negative potential therefore h positive ions will also not be secreted and the h positive will be retained in the body this is the mechanism of action of spironolactone and the aplerinone now if we look at the triametrine and the amyloride these triametrine and amyloride they will block only this channel the sodium channel as a result of this the same thing will happen the sodium will not be able to reabsorb into the circulation resulting in the loss of sodium into the urine along with water which is called as diuresis again there will be no secretion of potassium and there will be no secretion of h positive ions so this is all about the mechanism of the potassium sparing diuretics now let's look at the certain condition in which the potassium sparing diuretics they are used if we look at the uses of potassium sparing diuretics the first and the foremost use of potassium sparing diuretic is that they are used as an adjuvant to the to the potassium losing diuretics i am so sorry for this this should be potassium losing diuretics the diuretics like loop diuretics and the thiazide diuretics as i told you in my previous videos they used to cause the loss of potassium in the urine so by this mechanism if we add potassium sparing diuretics along with those drugs this will not result in the loss of potassium in the urine another condition is hyperaldosteronic states see guys what happens over there is that in certain condition the level of aldosterone may rise in the body and this may lead to some unwanted effects of aldosterone so in those condition we can simply give spironolactone and aplerinone to block the action of aldosterone they are also used in congestive heart failure congestive heart failure is a condition in which there is a failure of the heart to pump the blood into the body as a result of which there is a retention of fluid and blood within the body now whenever there is a congestive heart failure the increased level of aldosterone are always almost associated with congestive heart failure these increased level of aldosterone will have very unwanted and torious effect on the heart so for this condition anti androgenic use see guys the potassium sparing diuretic like the spironolactone it can block the androgenic receptor and for that purpose we can give it for anti androgenic use now let's look at what are the side effects which are associated with the use of potassium sparing diuretics if we talk about the side effects of this potassium sparing diuretics the first side effect is hyperkalemia hyperkalemia is because of the loss of secretion of potassium ions the second side effect is acidosis it is because of the loss of secretion of h positive ions another side effect is anti androgenic side effects these are especially associated with spironolactone and aplerinone because they block the androgenic receptor and hence they cause the anti androgenic effect so guys this is all about my current video do subscribe to my youtube channel for more videos like this